Aloha from Hawaii. Today I will be building a compost bin with which we'll be composting all of our kitchen waste and we'll be doing humanure human waste composting. Thanks for joining us. Many shops will give away pallets which are a good source of untreated wood. I was able to find these locally at various warehouse stores and supermarkets. At our transfer station I was able to find scrap fencing perfect for a compost bin. In the jungle I found dumped homemade shelves which make great boxes. At local restaurants I was given free white plastic buckets which we will use for kitchen scrap and human reflection. In addition to safety glasses you're going to need a set of gloves, a hammer, wire or metal cutters, and large metal staples. I got these for a few dollars from a hardware store nearby. Here is the completed pallet, covered by fencing and secured by metal staples. Repeat this procedure with three other pallets of the same size. Okay, so this is where I'm going to build the bin. It's got a bit of an incline, uh, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I've decided that I'm going to connect these pallets together via this twine right here. This is parachute cord. I'm just going to use this to tie the corners together and make a box. If I didn't have this, I could use wires, I could use cables, anything that was laying around that I could actually wrap these sides together with would work. Let's do it. So, okay. finished compost bin. Because I've tied the corners together, I can easily take them apart. If I need to move this, I can easily do so. I would put a lid on this if I had creatures that would climb in over the top, but here in Hawaii the only thing we have to concern ourselves with are wild chickens and wild pigs, which are all low to the ground. One alternate type of compost bin which is very easy to construct is this fencing loop. Simply connect the ends of a piece of wire fencing and you've got an instant bin. To start off the new compost pile, I am going to cover the bottom of the bin with one abundant organic material, dry leaves. Other good things to use are dry grasses, straw, or any light natural material that holds pockets of air. 
The microorganisms that digest decaying matter require oxygen in order to function, and it's our job to make sure they get some. A healthy compost pile requires a proper balance of moisture, carbon, nitrogen, and air. You will know that you are composting properly when the pile begins to warm up and get hot. The bugs that enjoy our scraps generate heat while they eat, cooking the pile down into a rich food for plants. The white plastic buckets that I mentioned earlier can be used to collect your kitchen scraps. Toss all of your leftovers into a bucket. If you eat eggs, it helps to crush the shells before putting them into the bin. You can compost just about anything plant, animal, or human-based, although I would avoid composting any kind of animal poop in your pile. When emptying a bucket, spread it evenly around the pile. Cover your deposit with leaves, straw, or any aerating organic stuff, creating a layered effect. Every time you add to the pile, cover it. This helps keep insects away, the smell down, and gives microorganisms something balancing to eat. By composting your kitchen scraps, you're keeping them out of the landfill and you're making excellent compost to grow your own personal garden. In the next segment, I'll be showing you how to make a humanure, human waste composting toilet. You can keep your waste out of the water supply and you can grow food with it. Oh, okay.